It's another S year in Apple land, but the brand new iPhone is going to go up against one of the best Android offerings this year. It's Joshua Vergar from Android Authority. What's going on, everybody? And this is the Samsung Galaxy S6 versus the Apple iPhone 6S. Now, quick disclaimer, we are changing up the format of the versus video just a little bit. So if you want to see the full details on this comparison, you can head on over to the card that's appearing right now. So you can click on it and go to the full written companion for this video at androidauthority.com. Actually, when it comes to design, you kind of have an even playing field here. And the main reason why is because the Samsung Galaxy S6 actually went with a glass and metal design this year, which eliminated the replaceable battery and the expandable storage, which makes these two phones actually offer very similar things in terms of their bodies. The iPhone actually has the same body as the original 6. Now the 6S comes with this rose gold that I'm using, uh, but otherwise for both of these phones, all of the buttons and everything pretty much land where you would expect them to be. Now the iPhone being just that little bit smaller is a little bit better when it comes to handling, but the somewhat larger Samsung Galaxy S6 is still not all that bad and you still get a lot of power underneath. Obviously, it's going to be a matter of taste for you guys. If you want the glass panels, then obviously the Galaxy S6 will be your choice. But if handling is what you need, the rounded sides and corners and the smaller overall profile of the iPhone 6S will probably be better for you. In display, especially if you're very spec hungry, you're probably going to think that the Galaxy S6 is a no-brainer. You get Quad HD resolution in this 5-inch screen that provides a lot of pixel density for sharpness and for work and for play, and of course the Super AMOLED display is quite nice for that higher saturation in the colors. But compare that to the smaller and overall lower resolution screen of the iPhone 6S, which still provides a pretty good experience even though it doesn't have that high pixel density for sharpness. Uh, still, it is an enjoyable display to use and it should be able to work pretty much for the common daily user. Now, what Apple has added into this display this year is called 3D Touch. Now, we're going to get into it a little bit more in the software section, but ultimately, the 3D Touch for this version of iOS actually adds a functionality on there that we think iOS has been needing for some time. Performance is another aspect that is kind of hard to talk about because they're looking at Android versus iOS, two completely different ecosystems that demand very different things from their phones. Obviously in the Android camp, we have a lot of high powered, high performing applications that require the best specifications. And you get that in the Galaxy S6 with the Exynos 7420 and three gigabytes of RAM. Two gigabytes of RAM and an Apple A9 dual core that has been updated from the previous A8 is what you get in the iPhone. But really between these two devices, you're not going to have that many problems problems with the very common tasks and even some high performing applications will still go by without any incidents. No matter which of these two devices you pick, you're probably going to have a really good time no matter what. Your daily tasks are definitely covered. Honestly, it comes down to how the operating system really presents itself, and it's what you're going to be looking at wrapped around all of the different applications you would install already. So that's where you can kind of take your pick because performance is no problem for either of these phones. Just like in design, hardware is on a bit of an even playing field because the two main features that differentiated Samsung from the Apple camp were the expandable storage and the replaceable batteries, which are not in the equation anymore. But Samsung is still able to boast the heart rate sensor on the back, which is nice to use from time to time, uh, but really it's just a bit of a curiosity rather than a full workout companion. Now, both of these phones do have fingerprint readers embedded inside of their home buttons, and they both work really well. What we will say is that Apple has has been able to enhance theirs so that you don't have to keep your finger on the button when you wake up the phone. Yes, it is faster than that of the uh, Samsung Galaxy S6, but it also kind of eliminates an easy way of getting to the camera. And one of the best parts about the Galaxy S6 is that you can double tap the home button to get straight into the camera. Even if you have a way of getting to the camera in the lock screen of the iPhone 6S, it's kind of stifled by the fact that it unlocks right away before you can even use it. Moving down to the bottom of the devices, you do get those two speakers and they are in the same place, which looked kind of funny in the beginning, but ultimately the two speakers don't really provide that great of an audio experience. The sound is often very tinny and doesn't have a lot of body. And even if it can get pretty loud, really you're only getting so much from one speaker that's located on the bottom. What's right next to them is more important. However, you have the ports for charging and the iPhone 6S does have the lightning port, which is reversible and that is kind of nice, but it doesn't have fast charging or wireless charging. That Galaxy the S6 instead can boast both of those things. So when it comes to powering up a 1715 mAh 
hour battery in the iPhone, you're probably going to be tethered for a lot longer times. The Galaxy S6 with its somewhat larger battery can still get about a day to maybe a little bit more than a day's work with the power saving features, which is the case for the iPhone as well. But at least in the middle of the day, if you need to charge up, it won't take very long for you to get the power that you need because fast charging is a very indispensable tool. Now, when it comes to the cameras, the main story here is Apple's enhancement to the camera package in the iPhone 6S. Now you have 12 megapixels in the rear camera compared to the 16 megapixels of the Galaxy S6, and both of the front-facing cameras have 5 megapixels to boast about. Now we're going to cycle through a number of pictures, and we're going to let you decide which one is better for you. But for us here at Android Authority, we actually found that both pictures, no matter which ones we took for these two phones, uh, really kind of pleased us no matter what. Uh, one phone didn't really win that much more over the other, if at all, uh, and really it's up to you to choose which color profile is better for you. Now we will say that the iPhone does tend to add a warmer tone to everything and it adds more contrast. Meanwhile, the Galaxy S6 puts a cooler tone to everything and its pictures are a little bit more evened out in their range. But uh, the iPhone can also boast 4K video recording now, which is nice, but it doesn't have optical image stabilization. What it can do though is use the screen as a flash when you're doing a selfie picture. Now it's nice to have in a pinch, but it does wash out the subject too much. The camera of the Samsung Galaxy S6 provides a lot of manual controls, which we think is probably what gives it the edge for us. But if you just want a great point and shoot experience, you're probably not going to get any better than the iPhone here. The auto mode in the Galaxy S6 is pretty good, but Apple has definitely been pioneering that for a long time now. And finally, in software, it's a matter of Android versus iOS. And we'll start off with Android, in this case, TouchWiz 4. The Samsung Galaxy S6, which actually has been stripped down. A lot of the tutorials and some of the features actually that kind of made it feel too bloated have been stripped away and you get a pretty spartan version of TouchWiz, the most that we've ever seen. And the whole interface is actually themable using a built-in theme engine. And then of course you have the multitasking capabilities with the multi-window and the S-window that are built in. But going from the customization capabilities of Android, you go to the more cut and dry, or what you see is what you get version of operating systems in iOS. Now, what you get are icons on the home screens all day, every day. And you also get some access to certain places like the command center from swiping up from the bottom and the notification dropdown, which you can get to by swiping down from the top. Other than that, recent app screen is triggered by double tapping the home button, and that's pretty much it. What has really been a big addition to this new iPhone is 3D Touch. Now, in terms of the display, there's a layer of sensors right underneath it that can sense how hard you're pressing on the display. Now, you could tap or tap and hold, or you can press down really hard and it will trigger some new functionality. And that mainly has to do with the home screen. Whereas you weren't able to put in widgets or shortcuts on here like you can in Android, now, depending on the application, you can press really hard on the icon and you will have some functions that get you straight into some places inside of the app, which is great to have because if you want to eliminate just that little bit of time that it takes for you to get in through the app, then 3D Touch will help you with that. Other places in the operating system that perform 3D touches are the gallery, mail, and messages in which you can actually press down hard enough to preview the content. Now we don't really think that 3D Touch is actually that big of a game changer, but we do think it's a nice feature to have that adds to iOS what we thought it was missing for a long time, mostly shortcuts, and because you don't have any widgets, there aren't really any easy ways of cutting some of the time and taps and swipes down. There used to be time when applications were available in iOS and not on Android, and the other way around was true too. But now you can pretty much get the same experience no matter which of these ecosystems you pick, and that's pretty awesome. It just matters now which of these interfaces matter more to you as what you're looking at before you even hit the app that you're going to use. Both of these phones come in at around the same price point, actually. Using T-Mobile as an example, you'll be looking at $650 out of pocket for the full retail price, sometimes a little bit more. But bear in mind that the Galaxy S6 comes with 32 gigabytes in the base model and the iPhone comes in at 16 gigabytes. And neither of these phones have expandable storage. So if you want more space in the iPhone specifically, you're going to be shelling out a hell of a lot more. 
And so there you have it for the Samsung Galaxy S6 and the iPhone 6S. These are two of the best phones that are available for their respective ecosystems, and that's a really good thing because they're also kind of on a more even playing field. The omission of a couple key features in the Galaxy S6 makes it more on par with the type of offering that Apple has been providing for years now. And when you look at it through that scope, these phones actually provide probably the best experiences you can ask for in smartphones today. You're going to get the simplicity and the ease of use of iOS, or you can take control of your Android iteration here inside of the Galaxy S6 with TouchWiz, and you have a lot of extra features to boot. 3D Touch is a great addition for iOS, but we do think that it is mainly what iOS has needed for a while. Meanwhile, in Android, there's plenty that has been offered in there that we already love to this day. So as always, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this versus between the Galaxy S6 and the iPhone 6S. As I said at the beginning of this video, you can find even more details and the more minute details like the spec sheets at the written companion, which you can find in the card that appeared up there at androidauthority.com. Don't forget to check out all of the other content from my colleagues in Android and click in the corner over here now uh, to get you to the Android Authority application, where you can find all of our content, including written posts and our Android Authority podcast discussing topics in Android every single week. When you're done with all of that, stick around, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and drop us likes on our videos, and then you can head on over to androidauthority.com for even more because we are your source for all things Android.